Alrighty, so now we're on the outside. We used to have a generator plug there, but this is where our inch and a quarter is going to come out, right next to it. Will be our one inch just for our control wiring. We'll step back. This is my main meter. Today we're going to construct a little pad, a concrete pad, help with a bobcat, a little bit manual, manual labor. And we'll see how it goes. All right, it's a little update. We're making progress. It's a lot of work just for this little old pad. But using a bobcat, manual labor. Two bags left. It's a little area left. So we're making progress. I'm not recording the whole thing just because it's boring. But anyways. All right, we'll update you in a little bit here. All right, voila. And there's our pad. So three by five, end up being uh, about 12 bags, so 10 bags, 60 pound, uh, four bags of pea stone on the bottom. And there's our three by five, and just doing a little bit of cleanup. And, We'll let that cure, and we'll probably run some electrical today. It's like 50 degrees here, Michigan. Pretty beautiful day today. Let that cure. We'll probably outline it. Just keep it on crack on the side, make it nice and sharp. And do some electrical. It's Saturday, March 7th beautiful outside sun shining and I'm going to try to get this generac mounted so spent pad is finally starting to cure after like a week uh, but they give you a nice template so got the holes marked um, it says use some 3 8 cement legs but I didn't get long enough so apparently they need to be about that long so I'm gonna probably get six inches I'm gonna go to the hardware store and go get some but we'll do that and we'll come back oh that's a nice oil cooler I didn't even know it had an oil cooler on it little baby cutie put all the stuff I got I got a heater to put around this and Somehow the battery, oh, maybe I gotta take this whole side off. They don't really give you good instructions on that, but I bet I do. I bet I gotta take this whole side off to get the, uh, some other parts. Yeah, probably do. Just gotta figure this out. I tried to read the instructions, but there's really not much going on there. They don't tell you a whole lot. But. All right, I'm just uh, not going to record the whole thing, but I'll do some updates and put this all together. Thanks. All right. So, I didn't really show it, but finish up the cotton, do it, PVC, dug a little trench, put it over there. All you needed was a three-quarter inch and a inch and a quarter, or sometimes they run both together, but I just want it separate. Alright, uh, took the four corners off, and it seems like 450 pounds, I'm going to see if I can move it over there. Still, I'm not sure if I can or not, but we're going to try.
All right, I guess that wasn't so bad. Whew. Oh man. All right, cool. Looks good. Pipes will come out the back there and probably put a fitting on there and seal tight it in. <sighs> Get a tape measure, we'll do a little final check. But we're good. A little back spot, I'll come back a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Haha, <laughs> like it. Wish it had some sort of a uh, little roof on it, though, so all that stuff on snow, rain, everything on this gun top. I might build a little lean to on it. All right, good enough for now. All right, day two of the Generac 22KW home generator install with the uh, automatic transfer switch. So I had to figure out where to put that automatic transfer switch and look how big it is. This is my 200 amp main and that transfer switch is huge. But anyways, decided to put it right next to it. So we're up here at our feed. So I got to redo this. This one will come down. It'll go through. The, it'll go through. Come down. Go through there. Come down. And it goes utility source. I go on the top two lugs. Right there. And then come down to the bottom here. Customer load. So that one T1, T2. Go through here. Down. Through here, through here, and it'll come up and go around the side. Then that'll come up and it'll go boom into the end of their three. Then we'll come down here to the generator source on these back two leads. Come down here, around, and it'll go up to here. And it's going to be a number four wire because it's only 100 amps. And that'll go up outside to the generator. And then coming from the generator on this one inch, come down here and there'll be like either six or seven control wires that hook up to here that starts the generator and does all the sensing. So yeah, I figured I'd get a couple little snips of where we're doing. Cause I looked on the line, didn't really see much, but this is the inside. And we'll go on outside and check it out. Haven't been doing a very good job keeping up with the videos and everything, but I did hook up the gas line. It's a three-quarter, it's got a nice big three-quarter inch line, and the three-quarter inch valve at the stores are really little, so I just stuck with the one inch and ran the gas line. I'm talking to myself again. That's the owner of the house. And so I'm just gonna have to paint this gas line. I'll probably do that. And run my four. But I need some, I need some seal tight from here up and over there. So that's my next thing. So they don't have it at Home Depot. And I'm gonna have to find it. Got this part. So from here up. And over to there. What? And now it's turned out really well. Oh, I'm really happy. And it's a drip leg inside on this guy, so I didn't have to put a drip leg there. It's already inside there. And nice big one inch gas valve. There should be plenty of fuel. I mean, the regular, the, the main uh, gas meter is right there. So, all right. Electrical. <sighs> we get some measurements, and this weekend we'll probably start pulling some wiring. All right, I don't know what day it is, but this is one very time-consuming do-it-yourselfer job, but saving lots of money. All right, over and out to the next one. All right, not sure what uh, clip we're on, but. 
figured I better make another clip right quick. So, went to Home Depot, bought a couple hundred dollars worth of wire. Um, this is actually number three, because I got a really good deal on it. My buddy had it from running some 100 amp industrial. It's a little tad bit bigger, but not much. As you can see, it, it went in just fine. And the inside, I had it all stretched out. Can't really see it in there, but. So, figured I would get it all up. Get the length that I needed. And then I would glue that onto there. Get it ran through here. Get it up to that uh, top one right there. So obviously it's a little bit long, but we'll do a little bit of cut and modification to it. We'll cut her down, we'll measure it, and we'll get her get her inside there and get these two, three, and four lugs hooked up. All right, this is what the inside looks like. A little cluttered, but water's going out. Get them down, ran through here. And we'll bring them down, but we've got plenty. So to get a measurement, I just ran a piece of 12 gauge through the conduit. Just so I didn't have a whole bunch of extras. But, all right, let me get these strung through here, and I'll be back. All right, not sure what episode this is, but we're running our wire. We're continuing on. We're running our 2 watt for our 200 amp main over here. It was quite a little, little challenging, a little fun. You know, I started on here, I went down, took the wire, and actually bent it. For a 45 and pulled it up through and it sucked it up in pulled it down here same thing figured out where it was bent to 90 pulled it up and then it popped up in there took this little bushing when my buddies told me and stuck that up in there right there so that it gave a little spacer so it didn't scrape up the sheathing too bad I didn't do it on the first one and it kind of scraped it up a little bit, and I remember, so I stuck it on for the other one, and it didn't. <sighs> so, huh, kind of, it was kind of a little workout. Got the wires up there, taped the white one. And this weekend, we're going to do the cutover. I got my pipe sitting up top. I had it going in here, but we can't use this for a raceway, so... We're going to cut it up there where that union's at. Take this. Tied into there, bring it over here, 90 straight down and into the top of this guy. And hopefully it's fired up. So right now I'm just gonna I'm gonna run this neutral upside here and come in right here. <sighs> Alright. Man, what a quite a workout. Took me probably about an hour to run them three. Turned out good though. I'm glad it's done. Oh, I thought I'd just get this on tape. Try to use some big dikes. No go. So for the average homeowner, seems to work pretty good. Bolt cutters. Cut right through it. A little sheeting left over. Just cut that. All right. All right. I'll route that. Uh, Code says you have to put some white tape around it, so I'll put some white tape around the end of that. And get her all routed up in there good, and uh, we're making progress. All right. Since I had it on pause, I didn't realize that. I figured out. I was throwing one last final shot, and. There's my neutrals. I just need to figure out what I need to do for my bonding. 
Um, I know I have to put in, I gotta separate all the grounds and the neutrals. Uh, I, got, I got that to do that. I mount that up in there and fight with that and put that one over here and separate all the grounds and neutral on this side. So I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I need to run a ground over to this one. I bet I probably do. So I'll probably have to go find that and get that over to there. Huh. But it's just coming along. I got my electrician buddy coming over tomorrow to help me out. But there it is, home install. She's coming along pretty good. Tomorrow we should be doing a startup. Alright, just a little update. So, we, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you don't really un, that know about that you have to do. So, this was our main panel, and it was all bonded. And when you put the generator in, this becomes your main panel. And this is where the bond is, which is up here. Which means you have to separate everything over here. So, went to Home Depot, bought these little ground strips. Yeah, no, probably no, no PPE on, but I got that ground strip, put it in. Got that ground strip, put it in. And then I had to take all the grounds from the neutrals and put them on the ground bar on both sides. So, I still got my pole barn ground to move and my bonding ground which is going down to my water pipe copper and I got a bar I got a, the line coming in for my eight foot bars that are going to the ground I got two of them out there up top there right there so I might have to move that too but that was quite a lot of work to make it look good so that it wasn't all messy and wrapped all around the white and the black wires so eh, it took about an hour and a half but that looks good uh, these are my feeds once once we have a power outage or once I decide to pop that meter put that little section in up there get that meter and come down on top of there and it'll be done well, we're making progress. Oh, and that little green bonding screw that has to come out too. But I'm going to leave it in for now because I'm not quite all the way there yet. So there's actually a lot of little stuff to do to this to make it all code ready and legal. And then they ain't going to burn nothing down. So making good progress. I'm um, hoping by this weekend we'll be doing a startup on our 22. KW Generac generator with 200 amp ATS. Thank you. All right, March 22nd, and did a final tie-in. Had to pull out the mains, put that sweep in to a LB, and down on the top, neutral. Come out, bottom, up, and our 22KW generator generator is powering. Will be powering the whole house in the outage. Now I just need to get this all bundled up, get everything closed up, and head outside and do a startup and clean up our mess. And voila. All uh, nice and closed up. Looking pretty good. Alright. Now we're going to head outside and go attempt a startup. Alright, here we are. Another episode. Um, putting in the battery and the battery warmer and wiring which is kind of a pain in the butt to get to but it's 
back there you gotta hook the end one into really hard to get to but you gotta pull the fuses on the inside so you don't short nothing out wiring right here ran through the firewall and I just want to run the uh, come out of the top run down and for the oil filter heater so right there's a little thermostat automatic thermostat oil filter heaters on um, Batteries on. Put it that way because I had the other way. The wires are all out here by the door and I didn't really like it. They give you this nice little connector though, so shouldn't do anything. Um, I was also reading some forums where some people put set this on uh, styrofoam or something or do something else with it. I just worry about this little connector right here rubbing and vibrating. So I just um, got a little piece of rubber hose. Snipped it, cut it down, just set it right here as a like, little vibration barrier. So, Alright, it's actually taking a long time. It's freezing today, too. But, yeah, we're back inside. It's off. And now it's ready to be set up. Um, I'm gonna quick run back inside and put my fuses back in. All right, ran aside, and right now this is all powered up. This is on. We got voltage going over to our main panel, so I have to be real careful. But these are the three fuses. They're for N1 and 2 and T1. This takes power off, so when you're monkey around out there, you don't short nothing out. There's the fuses. A little tool to give you. Want to be careful, and I'm gonna pop them back in. All right, voila, they're back in, and this little handy dandy fuse puller can also use to put them back in. It's supposed to be a nice little storage spot for it, somewhere's in here, but I'm gonna have to find it. All right, heading back outside. All right, back outside, let's just see if anything, wow, that warmed up fast. I need to pull these wires back off of here so they don't. Well, yeah, it's pretty warm. Probably not. Be able to fill that one. The battery is under there, but I'm gonna get it all buttoned up and start this generator up. All right, I'll be back. All right, we're back at it again. Beautiful day. It is the 3rd of March. Running a test run and checking gas pressure. This is static for now. Bad. supposed to be five to seven into the water column and it's almost seven but there's no load on it so we'll, we'll check it again once we uh, need to but right now we're good <laughs> 